So thank you all for agreeing to be here and agreeing to be on tape. Uh, when we get to the Q&A portion at the end, you might see the camera whip around and point at you, but don't be shy. Um, and if for any reason you get extremely camera shy and there's questions you want to ask at the end, Augie will be around to hang out and answer those questions. Um, but for the most part, we're just really excited to hear the information that he's going to share with us, a little bit about his journey, some of the key points that have uh, directed him along the way, and think about how that might relate to you this part in your career as you're taking that step from learning here at LACC, getting your feet into the industry, and what direction that might take you. Uh, there's a few people in the room I haven't met before, so for those of you I haven't met, welcome everyone. I'm Jen Vaughn, the department chair of Cinema and TV. I also teach the TV production classes, so if you think this studio looks awesome and you want to be part of it, I want to have you in the classes. Come sign up. And then other than that, I'm just excited to sit down and listen to what Augie has to share for us today. So please welcome Emmy award-winning producer, Augie Max Vargas. Thank you. So yes, my name is Augie Max Vargas, and I am an Emmy award-winning producer. Now, I won my Emmy for the Oscars All Access. The Oscars All Access is a digital presentation of the Oscars. Basically during the Oscars we have a simultaneous show that's going on where we're answering Twitter questions and uh, interactive things basically. It's changed every couple of years but that's basically what it is. So basically it's cool because now you could win Emmys for an internet shows and that's when you think about that that's pretty amazing. Now I've worked on lots of different shows. I've worked on the Oscars, I've worked on the Grammys, I've worked on the Super Bowl halftime show nine years um, Super, uh, Kids' Choice Awards, Teen Choice Awards, Ultimate Fighter Live, Victoria's Secret Fashion Show, and then PBS and Performance at the White House, where I actually got to go to the White House and meet President Obama, which is probably my highlight of my career. Um, but I also got to work for the namesake of the studio, Dick Clark, uh, when I worked on Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and Eve many years ago, and I got to sit by the legend himself. So that was pretty amazing. So I've done all that. I've had a great career the last 20 years, and I've won an Emmy, but what it boils down to now is I'm trying to do things like this. I'm trying to come and talk to people because what I've learned is that I actually really enjoy trying to help people and trying to guide people who are looking for guidance because you could learn everything you want here, but in the end, it's, it's really about getting in and, and meeting the right people. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. Now, I was not uh, from a family of producers. I'm actually the son of immigrants, and so I didn't really have this pathway. My, my father worked for Pacific Bell. He was a salesperson, and my mother was um, a nurse. And so they really didn't want me to get into this business. When I told them I was going to do it, they were like, yeah, I don't think this is really for you. So it, it was not something I wanted that they wanted me to do, but it was something that in my heart I, I really wanted to do because it, it's something that made me happy. It was something that when I was growing up, I would do things that uh, we made home. My brothers and I would make, my brother and I would make home movies, and I would also work behind the scenes at our talent show. Instead of actually doing something on stage, I worked behind the scenes, and it was, I actually really enjoyed it. So I realized early on this was where I kind of wanted to go. Now, yeah, I, I was not a cool person growing up. I was actually a <laughs> big, goofy dude. I like comic books. I like wrestling. I like a lot of stuff that uh, doesn't make me somebody who uh, ideally would go into this world, but I found it because of the things that I had done. Now, I, I also wasn't a good student, and I had bad grades, and I also got into some legal trouble and got arrested in my high school <laughs> sophomore year. And so I did that stuff, but I was able to turn it around through some of the things we're going to talk about now. Now, some of my keys to success basically break down to positive state of mind. Now, this is being positive, smiling, talking to people, enjoying life basically. Having a positive state of mind will change everything for you because if you're positive, people want you around. If you're negative, people do not want you around. So it's really important to basically try to think, think good thoughts, be happy, and communicate with your, with your friends. Make, build relationships with people because when people build relationships with you, they want to have you around. 
and when a job opens up, they'll remember you because you've built a relationship with them. It happens to me all the time. I got my job on the Oscars because I built relationships with the people who ended up becoming people that hired me. So that's very important. Be positive, smile, enjoy, enjoy what you're doing because in the end, that's what it's all about. Like don't get in, you, you do stuff because you wanna have fun and enjoy it, especially this. So if you're gonna make money and, and that sort of stuff, you wanna have fun and enjoy it. So positive state of mind, big important thing. Useful skills. Now this boils down to the stuff you're learning here, but also additional things. Like if you're gonna learn production techniques here, but you could learn things like Photoshop, you could learn things like Microsoft Excel, PowerPoint, things like that. Every additional skill you have in your arsenal makes you that much more hireable. If you, for example, I just did a show where, and I was working as a script department, but they mentioned they wanted to Photoshop somebody's face onto something, and I volunteered. I knew I knew how to do that because I used to do it on Facebook for all my friends. I'd Photoshop their heads onto <laughs> onto things just for fun. And I learned that like in high school just for fun and it became a skill set that I've actually been able to utilize. So learn as many skills as you can because it definitely will make you more hireable. And the last thing, it's trite, it's, it sounds cliche, but it, it's hard work, it's sacrifice. It's willing to basically say, I have, I have to be at a shoot tomorrow. I can't go out tonight and go clubbing. I can't hang out with my friends, I have to rest, or in some cases, you're gonna miss birthdays, weddings, I've missed, I've missed all that sort of stuff. But in the end, you can't, especially in production, if, if your show is on a certain date, and you have to black out three weeks, four weeks for that production, you're gonna miss some stuff, and you have to realize that's gonna be the case. Also, hours, this is not a industry where hours are short. You are going to be spending long hours in this industry depending on your position, but it is a very time consuming. So just understand that that's one of the big parts of this is, is being willing to sacrifice, spend the long hours in the days. So every person is a superhero in their mind and, and my origin story starts off with basically being an immigrant. My family came from the Philippines, came to the United States, and gave me an opportunity that a lot of my cousins and family members over there do not have living here in the United States. Um, are, there, are there some people here not from the United States? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> great. So it, a lot of what's, what some people don't realize who are born here and live here is that in a lot of other countries, things are not as easy as it is here. And you know, sometimes we rag on the United States and this, this, and that, but it's still the greatest country in the world. And I, I just came from the Philippines a couple weeks ago, and as much as I loved it, I was missing the United States every minute. So it's, it's one of those sort of things that, that, for me, helped me out because I could appreciate and understand that my family were not able to enjoy the things that I got to enjoy. So it made me a little bit hungrier. So with that, for, for those of you who don't have that sort of thing, you just have to get some perspective and whether that's having friends who are not from here or poor even it's it's making sure you understand like we you have amazing opportunities here in the united states and you should take them now i mentioned i lived in the philippines and in the philippines one of the great things i had is i had a very big family and a big loving family now the, where this plays in is that having big having a lot of positive people around you is good. Having a lot of negative people around you is bad. Just like I mentioned earlier, you don't want negative people around you. You don't want to hire negative people. So luckily for me, I had a lot of loving and caring people and that positivity and the joking and all that stuff helped create who I am now. And that helped me down the road because it made me a positive person and made me somebody people wanted to have because they would know. I would come in and joke around and I would always have fun. So with this, if you don't have this, what I would suggest is evaluate the people around you, determine people who are not positive and who are not encouraging your career. Like for example, when my parents told me that, you know, as much as I love them, I had to be like, okay, I gotta do this because this is what I wanna do. But you might have a friend who's like, yeah, you're never gonna make it in this business. Don't, you should just quit now, right? You might not wanna hang, around, hang out with that friend as much. I'm not saying cut them off and don't be friends with them, but I'm saying that you should 
try to surround yourself with people who are positive, who will cheer you on, cheerleaders and people that will make you feel like that you're doing the right thing. So that's really important. Now, one of the th things also that I benefited from was I grew up in Burbank, California. So I lived around here and living around here affords you a lot of opportunities. You get to see things being made. When I was a little kid, I, was, uh, I got to see the A-team being made in my neighborhood. They were shooting and Mr. T was sitting in his chair and I was a big Mr. T fan because I saw Rocky III and I was like, yeah, that's Mr. T. So it really helped me understand that we're a lot closer to this, to the, to the world of television and production than, than you, you realize. Because if you're in Oklahoma or if you're in some other place, you might not, you might think, oh wow, that's, I can never get there. But just being here, adds a whole extra element. We have Universal Studios, we have the Warner Brothers Tour. By the way, the Warner Brothers Tour is amazing. If you haven't taken that tour, take it. It's very affordable and it's, it's way better than Universal because Universal will make you sick if you go through it all the way through. So, um, so that was one of the things that really helped me out. Having things around me that, that inspired me and I got to see things and say, oh, I can do that, I wanna do that. So that was, those were the things that helped me find my passion. Luckily for a lot of you guys, I assume you're here because you found this and you're like, I want to do this, right? Is that a fair assessment? Is there anybody here who does not know what they want to do and they're here kind of, and that's okay. it's okay yeah, to totally. You know, that's the thing. It's like just breaking into the industry is one thing. There's so many job opportunities in this industry. There's jobs. I work in the live sector, the live variety world is what they call it. But then there's film, and then there's commercials, and then there's corporate jobs. There's so many jobs available within this kind of world. And so if you're just like, well, I want to get into show business, that's great. That's a good enough start. Now, once you get into show business, you want to like kind of hone it down and figure out, well, what do I like about show business? Do I like doing camera work? Do I like doing audio? Do I like doing lighting? Start to think about those sort of things because once you know what you want to do, then you can start to make that path and you can start going down and asking people who do that sort of stuff, like, what do I do next? What do I do next? So that's a big important thing. It's, it's good that you all are, are all here now and you know that's what you want to do, <clears throat> but try to think about it. Try to think about what specifically do you like about production and that sort of thing so that you can move forward in that. Because if you don't know what you want and you're kind of hopping around, it, it, it's going to be harder for you to move up. If you're like, well, I want to do this, and then you move to another thing, you're like, oh, I want to do this. If you kind of stick to something and you keep moving with it, it will allow you to accelerate quicker. Now, education and experience. So I, this is a picture of me uh, working for Mount San Antonio College. That's where I went to school. And we would do things where we would go out and shoot concerts. We would go, we had a deal with a, a news uh, organization and we would, uh, in the city, and we would do live news broadcasts from our studio. And it helped create that experience that Hollywood desires from you. You need to have experience, just like any job, really. They want you to have experience, right? So luckily for me, I was able to get experience doing things like this. Now, like I mentioned, I was a bad student at first. I actually flunked, almost didn't graduate high school. I told you I got into some legal problems. My first year of college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I still hadn't figured out that the things of my past were actually shaping my future. And I was doing, I'd kind of dropped out the first semester, went to go work. I wanted to make some money. And then I realized by the end of the summer, I wanted to get back in. And I went full board, took all production classes. I didn't take history, I didn't take Spanish, I didn't take anything. I just took production, 100%, went all in for it. And that helped me reach the next level because I had a direction, and that's just that's really important. You have to have a direction. You have to set goals. Great attitude. So I mentioned that again. One of the things that got me where I got was because I had a great attitude. The reason I'm in this industry is one of my teachers, who was a teacher for uh, voiceover, she was teacher for public speaking and com uh, vo voiceover for commercials as well. And I, I would come into her class. And I would have a good attitude and I would laugh and I would joke. It was all that stuff that my family had instilled upon me. And she loved me and she was like, I want to help you out. And so she actually gave me an opportunity to work for the radio station at the school. And I did a three hour 80s radio show 
and I learned a lot about the 80s uh, during that time. And that helped me. And then the next step was, it just so happened her husband was a producer. So when he came asking her, do you have any good students who want opportunities, she opened a very big door for me. So with that said, you'd be nice to Jen, because you never know. <laughs> you never know when an opportunity is going to come across her desk. So have a great attitude again. It's, it, I can't stress it enough. Like frowns and negativity, and even if you leave this industry and you don't follow through with it, just in life, just be positive because it's, it's just going to help you in every aspect of your life. So now back to learning skills. So when I was in school, I had, uh, in addition to doing the, the stuff that we were doing, I was doing, I was on my computer at home. I was, again, a nerd, and I did not go out and do dorm room parties or anything like that. I would come home, and I would work on my computer, and I was, I'd just gotten a computer, so I was learning how to use a computer. So I spent a lot of time just learning computers, and learning, having computer skills in this industry is crucial. It is crucial. You, now, you can get by without them, but you will accelerate further if you have them. So learn skills, especially things that work in this industry. Editing, if you could learn how to edit, if you're a reporter, if you're um, a producer, if you can edit, that just that adds a whole level to, to what you can do. So that, Photoshop, amazing skills to learn. Now, I interned during, while I was in college. So for sure, any intern opportunities you can get while you're here, take them. Look, you can go online. You can look at uh, the Film Commission has stuff. I'm sure there's opportunities that pop up here. Get experience. The, the people behind the camera, the people that jumped up to do this, like that's, do that. Like if you, when there's an opportunity that comes up, jump on it because the more experience you have, the more when they ask you what kind of experience you have, you can rifle off. Well, I do audio for this. I do camera for this. So gain experience, and also, if you can, create your own opportunities. One of the things I did while I was in college was, I mentioned I was a big wrestling fan. There is a wrestling promotion based out of San Bernardino. I used to go to their shows. They had shows in the Boys and Girls Club. And I would go to their shows, and I noticed they didn't have cameras. It just so happened I was in school. I had access to cameras. So I offered to shoot their shows. And I started going to their shows. I, I basically produced it and, and had my friends come down, other people who were looking for experience, and we shot their shows. And I would shoot camera, and I would direct at times. I would switch off with a friend of mine. But I created that opportunity for myself because I just I wanted to create something. I wanted to have the creative ability. Because it's one thing when you hop behind a camera. It's another thing when you hop behind audio. But when you actually are creating the content, it's a whole other level. It makes you feel like you can do so much more. And so I did that. I created what, uh, what's called a public access show. For those of you who don't know, public access was precursor to YouTube, I guess. You know, you could, you could create a show and put it in your local stream and it, the, the Comcast or whatever your local cable was. And we created the show and it aired to maybe a couple hundred people. But I completed it. I knew I did. I said I produced a show. So at 18, I produced a show. It wasn't very good. but. I produced the show. So create opportunities for yourself. If, you, if you're not getting the opportunities, create them for yourself. Because nobody's going to like pick you out of a crowd and say, that person looks like they can do production work. I'm going to go bring them on. It, it doesn't happen that way. So create the opportunities for yourself and get, get that experience that you might not be getting if you don't get an internship or some sort of other job. Building a network, this is huge. And this comes back to being positive and building relationships with people. When you, all these people in your class right now, you need to be friendly with them. You need to talk because you never know what, if one of them is going to get a job on a show and they need a PA or they need an extra body. So build relationships. And don't do it because you want to get the job. Do it because you want to build relationships and you want to have friends and you want to have people that you know are going to vouch for you when something opens up, when a possibility opens up, an opportunity opens up. Be sure to, to have relationships with people. It's, it's really important because, again, my job that I got on the Oscars, I wouldn't have gotten it if I didn't have a relationship with the guy who ended up hiring me. And if, if I was just the quiet person in the office who didn't say anything and didn't do anything like that, 
I wouldn't have got the job, but I'm, I was the guy in the office smiling, laughing, joking, and so it, it got me that opportunity, no doubt. Create goals. Um, this is basically, you know, what I kind of mentioned earlier. Your first goal is getting in the industry, right? But also, once you get in, you have to kind of set standards for yourself. I always wanted, my original goal was be a producer by the time I'm 30. Um, I kind of hit that because I did some producing work, but it was like public access sort of stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't TV production. It wasn't stuff that was on television or cable. It wasn't until I was like 32 that I hit the goal, but I set the goal for myself and I was able to reach it eventually. So nobody was counting other than me. So it's fine, but just set the goals for yourself. Like I'm gonna do this by this period. It's really important. You have to set goals and it allows you to, to kind of reach for them, you know? Because if you don't set goals, you're just gonna keep going at it and you, you never know where, you wanna, where you're gonna land, okay? Now, breaking in, this is the hardest part of the industry because when you break in, it really requires somebody vouching for you and that boils down to reliability. It boils down to knowing that you have the experience and if you don't build the relationships like I mentioned and if you don't do things like that gain you experience to, to know that you're reliable because for example if you have a friend that you worked with on on a show or on an indie project but you showed up every day and you work the hardest out of everybody, they'll remember that. They'll remember that you showed up every day on time and you stayed after everyone was gone to help do stuff. But they'll also remember if you didn't show up. And they will remember if you were negative and they'll remember if you were just not a pleasant person to be around. So this is the hardest part and it's very important that you do some of the things I mentioned earlier, connect with people, build relationships, because l luckily for me, my story was that my teacher got me my opportunity, right? But everybody's story is different. My story's what it is. My friend's was an intern for the Television Academy. That's how he got his start. Another friend was, had a, a friend who was a craft service person, the people that do all the food. That was his in. So there's so many different ways to get in, but in the end, it's all about building a relationship with one person and that person saying, this person's reliable enough for me to hire. So I can't stress that enough. It's super important. Now standing out, this is something that, again, it's, it's, it's showing up early, it's staying late, it's doing things nobody asks you to do. Uh, one of the things when I was working as a PA on the Oscars in 2000, one of the things I did was I went and organized the paper room. There's papers, different color paper, because in, in the, our world, every day there's a revision, they change the color of the pages just to a different color. So there's like tons of paper in the room. And I went in there and I just started organizing the paper, stacking it up, making sure it all looked nice and made sense. And then I would go into the kitchen and I would go into the fridge and the fridge had all the sodas everywhere, but they were all kind of scattered and I went in there and I organized them. I, I gained a little bit of OCD during this, <laughs> but it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing, but it, it, it helped the coordinators and the people that were hiring for the next show afterwards say, I want to bring you out. I want to bring you to this next project because I saw that you turned every Coca-Cola can <laughs> to face the person opening the fridge. And I, even to this day, sometimes I'll go into the fridge and I'll notice that it's not set up that way and I'll do it. But that's something that you could do to stand out. It's, 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 about, it's about doing things that are more than just what's required of you. So definitely stand out. Um, again, knowing somebody, it's, it's, it just boils down to, to, to your friendships, your relationships. So just constantly build relationships and, and make sure that, that people remember you for the good things that you do when you work, all right? Now, one of the other things is finding a mentor. If you know what you wanna do, if you at least know you wanna get into the industry and you know one person that does it already, talk to them. Ask them how they got in. Ask them what, what sort of things they learned to get into that field. Uh, in some cases, people will want to take you under their wing because like, I get a lot of people that reach out to me and say, hey, you know, I wanna do this, this, and that. And when people reach out to me, I'm, I feel inclined to help them because I, 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 I respect that. I respect that you're saying, okay, I wanna do this. How can I get to that place? 
because th it takes a lot. It takes a lot to, to reach out and, and ask. So find mentors, find people who can do that sort of thing and, and guide you down the path, okay? Uh, we'll take Q&A in a second, right? Um, so, okay, once you get in, now, the hardest part, again, is, is getting in, but once you get in, you have to do things to move up. Now, if you want to stay in the position you're at, if you want to just be a camera operator, a utility, or a stage manager, that's completely fine. There's, there's, you can make, I, I have a lot of friends who are utilities and camera operators who make great money. They're in the unions. They got insurance. They got all that stuff. But if you are more ambitious and you want to go higher up, you do need to do things and learn more skills. This is one of my mentors, Louis J. Horvitz. He's a multi-Emmy multi award-winning director. This is actually 2000. I was a PA, and I saw he had won the Emmy while directing, he, he, while directing the show. He won the Emmy for the Oscars. So while he's directing the show, the package airs, he cuts to himself in the truck, accepts the award, and goes back to the show. It's amazing. And he's one of my mentors. And he's helped me level up. He's given me book recommendations. He's given me um, just, just praise, you know, confidence. Like just, just sometimes having somebody at that level be proud of you is, is an amazing thing and makes you feel like you can break through a wall. So he is one of the people that helped me level up. And again, it was through positive attitude. I used to go and drop off scripts at his house in the Hollywood Hills in the middle of the rain and he saw me come in and he remembered that I did that with a smile on my face and every time down the road he would remember me and he would give me opportunities and he was notoriously known for just being a very strict regimented person and he he was amazing to me and, and I was scared at first but he the minute he saw my hard work and positive energy he just he took me under his wing and it, it, it helped out a lot. Now, once you're in the industry, one of the tough things you're gonna run into is burnout. Because as amazing as the industry is, like I mentioned, you're gonna work late hours, you're going to uh, work long periods of time, and you can reach a point where you're like, I don't wanna do this anymore. It's just not what I wanna do. So you have to try to do things that will help you not burn out. And that's whether that's creating a little side hustle. Now, now is the best time for this too, and I'll get into this later, but you can create a Twitch channel, you could create a YouTube channel, you could create Instagram page, you could do so many different things as just a little side project. Or you could crochet too if you want, but there's, there's things you could do that are in this vein that you can be doing to help give you a level of, of equity in the space. And that, and especially now, if you end up getting a million followers on your Instagram page and you're a PA or something, next thing you know, you could be hosting the show you're PAing on because networks are constantly looking at that stuff now because all the ratings are going away from television. And, and the reason being is because people's heads are in their phones and people are watching Netflix and streaming devices all the time now. So create side hustles that can help build up your following, you know? And it doesn't have to be production related stuff. If you do stuff on the side and you have like a chicken farm and you like do videos of your chickens, you might create a, a big following in that space. And I say that because I know people who are doing this sort of stuff. I have a friend who does mixed drinks and he has 22 million followers on Facebook by creating mixed drinks online. And it's it's one of those things where it's it's, again, it's about what you love anyway and so when you're, when you're doing something that you love anyway, you're gonna put more passion into it. And you could do that while you're in production, while you're, while you're a runner, while you're working in makeup, while you're working in whatever in that field, you could also on the weekends be doing that. Or you could, with Instagram, you could be doing it on your lunch break. So just think about that. Create things on the side, side hustles, because that's the sort of stuff that'll help you avoid burnout. Like I mentioned earlier with creating a, uh, a wrestling show for myself, it, it helped me use my creative juices and not be forced to just do what other people were making me do. So when you're able to make the decisions, like you, you have autonomy over that. Nobody's gonna tell you, oh, you know what? 
the video game you're playing on your Twitch stream isn't that good. No, I don't care. It's my Twitch stream. I can do whatever I want, right? Or the, your YouTube blog isn't, you know, I, I don't really like the topic. Well, it doesn't matter. That's what I like, and that's why I'm doing it. So create that sort of stuff to avoid burnout. Uh, again, communicate goals. Now, um, setting goals, what I mentioned earlier. Now, communicating goals, this is what I talked to you about earlier. When you're in the industry and you're already working, if you're a PA, if you're a lower level person, if you want to move up, you have to tell people. You have to let them know, I want to do that. Hey, can I do camera one day? Or can I do uh, audio one day? Or, or any, any of that sort of stuff. Like if you're a PA, talk to the camera person. Talk to the makeup people. Talk to those sort of people and tell them, I want to do this. When I was a PA, I got kind of thrown into the script department and I told them, I, I liked it. I was like, this is really cool. I get to look through scripts and I was finding typos and just factual errors in the script that the writers didn't know about. And, I, and one of them was actually wrestling. They put, they put a wrestler's name, but they, they said it was a, a different championship. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> I know my wrestling, that's wrong. And of course, the writers don't know. They look on Wikipedia or they just do the research. And so I went and told them and I was like, wow, I'm a PA, but I actually just saved the show and told, well, not save the show, but you know, I was able to help out the show by just doing that. So um, communicate goals to people, tell people what you want to do because they're not going to know that you want to be a producer next. You know, I, my big step, my big opportunity was when I talked to Ken Ehrlich. Ken Ehrlich is the producer of the Grammys. He's been producing the Grammys for over 40 years. I worked with him on the Emmy Awards one year and my, my sole goal was to impress him, make sure he knew that I was still as good as he remembered. And at the end of the show, I was going to tell him I want to produce for him because I wanted to produce on the Grammys. And so I talked to him at, right after the show and he said, yeah, you know, the Grammys are a little booked up right now, but I have this show coming up and I think you could probably fit in it. And it was the Beatles 50th anniversary special for CBS, which had Paul McCartney and Ringo and a bunch of great performances. So. I, because I told him that, I got to work with the Beatles and it was one of the most amazing things. And had I not done that, he wouldn't have just said, hey, Augie, why don't you come over here and work on this? You have to tell people what you want to do. So be very clear about your goals. Now, masterminding, I'm big on this. Iron sharpens iron. Hang out with people, and this goes back to earlier, hang out with people that are doing what you are doing and want to do what you're doing. Talk to them about your goals and their goals. Iron sharpens iron, the swords clanging against each other because you will get better when you work with people who are trying to level up as well. You know, it's like when you go on a basketball court or if you play sports with people. If you play against people who aren't as good and you're dominating over them and dunking on them and that sort of thing, that's fine. But in the end, you're not getting better. But if you go to up, up to town and go play against people who are way better, you're going to get better. So definitely mastermind, meet with people that want to do, they, they don't necessarily have to be doing exactly what you want to do, but they just know that they want to do, they want to elevate their game. Because what happens is if you have a friend who is in finance and he wants to level up his game and you have another friend who does travel sort of stuff and he wants to elevate that game, you can help each other out. You can help each other out. Like I have a friend who does uh, has a YouTube channel and he's doing like mentoring and but his video production is way off base and he'll ask me questions and he'll get my advice and so again that's just we're sharpening our swords because we're both trying to reach the next level so mastermind with people find people who are trying to do what you're trying to do as well there's a great book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill it's one of the oldest books in this genre and it's, it's all about setting goals, putting things on paper and following through with them. So look that up, uh, it's all about masterminding. Now in that vein, never stop learning. So once you're in, once you've graduated here and you're in the industry and you're trying to reach that next level, keep learning things, don't stop. There's lots of ways to keep going forward and, and learning new skills. There's uh, self-help books like I mentioned, uh, think and Grow Rich. There's, um, uh, if you're not good with finance, I've, I was very bad with finance growing up. There's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. There's uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. Anybody know who Gary V is? Anybody heard? Okay, so Gary V is a marketing genius. He 
took his father's alcohol business, liquor shop, and he turned it from a $3 million business to a $60 million business through utilizing Google AdWords, utilizing Facebook, all that sort of stuff, and opening up people to his father's wine company by doing a, he also did a YouTube channel called Wine Library, and he would, he would drink wine and basically have a little show and talk about wine, but he would dumb it down for people who didn't know about wine. And that helped create, take his dad's liquor business from $3 million to $60 million. So look up Gary V, V-E-E -E is kind of what he goes by short, but Vaynerchuk is his name. He's got a couple of books. They're all outstanding. He's a little gruff, so if you don't like cursing, sometimes he might not be the best for you, but I've learned a lot of great stuff from him. Online courses, so Udemy, uh, lynda.com, there's, there's tons of different resources where you could continue to learn things. If you don't know Photoshop coming out of this, or you don't know Adobe Premiere or any of those sort of things, you can go online and you could learn those sort of things. So don't, don't stop once you're here and once you've gotten in, keep going, learn more things. Now this one's huge, library card. How many people here have a LA Public Library card? Okay, great, it's outstanding. So with a library card, you have access to tons of free stuff, movies, uh, books, ebooks, comic books. That's actually how I got them because I mentioned I'm a big geek, I like comic books. Somebody told me, oh, you could read free comics online. I looked it up, there's so many great apps. There's an app called hoopla.com, H-O-O-P-L-A. And actually, if you, go to, if you just go to the library page, um, the LA library page, there's an e-media tab. You go there, you'll see all the stuff that's available there. You can, you can get online courses with lynda.com. So if you wanna learn how to do Premiere, it's all there, free of charge, as long as you have a library card. Um, so look that up. Toastmasters, Toast, has anybody ever heard of Toastmasters? Okay, I just joined last year because I was trying to level up my game because I realized I had stagnated and I had kind of stopped learning. And Toastmasters, is all about presentation, it's all about doing what I'm doing right now, standing in front of people and talking to people. And if you are not good at communicating with people, Toastmasters is for you. And it's not, it's very affordable, it's only about 40 bucks every six months, I think. But it's, it's great, and it's a very positive, it's a very positive room. Everybody's trying to do the same thing again, so when you walk in there, everybody's friendly, nobody's laughing at what you're saying, unless you're trying to say something funny, but like, it is a great positive environment, and if you are not good at communicating, I highly suggest looking into Toastmasters. There's a club I go to right by Griffith Park around here, but there's clubs everywhere. So just go to toastmasters.org and you could find that information. Now, uh, I mentioned new media, and this is just, this is an amazing place, amazing time right now, honestly, because you have an opportunity that I didn't have growing up because I did have public access and that sort of stuff. Now you can create your own content. You can basically create side hustles for yourself while you're trying to get to that next level and basically create your own content of, of stuff. If you have, say you're good at piano on the side and you can do a YouTube channel where you do piano covers or teach people how to play piano, that sort of thing. It, one of the, has anybody heard of Ryan's Toy Review? Yeah. Okay. So Ryan's Toy Review, for those of you who don't know, is this kid who opens toys, and his parents basically videotape him while he's doing it. Probably the worst production I've ever seen. It's very, very, very just rudimentary. They made, I think, $11 million last year off of it. Was it? Over 20. Over 20, okay. Yeah. So it's grown since the last time I checked, but it's, it's amazing, the fact that this family is you know, shooting their kid playing the toys. And of course, they don't have to buy those toys anymore because every single one of those toy companies is just sending them the stuff, right? So create your own content, build these brands out, and you can get free stuff out of it. You, you really can because people, if you build your social proof and you, like for example, a friend of mine is trying to do travel. And so she's building out her social proof. She got flown out to like Barbados by a hotel that wanted her to do social content for their site because they had no clue about it. And they're like, oh, this girl is doing travel vlogs. So build that sort of stuff, create content. And there's so many different places to do it. Um, does everybody know what Twitch is? Has it, 
Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Twitch is, Twitch is a gaming platform. It's where people will sit and play video games. And there's like a little picture and picture box of them playing the video games. And again, it's another space where people are making money. YouTube, obviously, Facebook, Instagram, those, those places are all places where you can go and create your own content on the side and build that up. And even if, say you decide today, like, I don't really want to get into TV anymore, ratings suck, you know, there's, there's, that's not really the world I want to get into. If, if people aren't giving you opportunities, like we were talking about earlier, create your, your own opportunities, shoot your own stuff. And in the end, you know, you have to be patient with it. It's not going to happen in like a year. I had a friend who would do boxing interviews. He would go to boxing workouts. And when you go to the boxing workouts, you can go and they do these scrums where everybody gets around and puts their microphone in front of their faces and they ask questions. He would do these interviews and it took him nine years, but from the start of it to the end of it, he now works as a Fox analyst for boxing fights. So it's, it's very attainable. Um, you just have to be patient about it. It can't be about like, when am I going to get rich? The, your goals need to be about what makes me happy, what makes me keep doing what I'm doing. There's another great book, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. And what it boils down to is, you know, why are you doing what you're doing? And um, because when, in the end, if what you're doing is pure, it's, it's, it's what you want to do and you love it, it will show. It will show in your work because you'll be more passionate about it. And it'll show because people will, will be willing to give you more opportunities because they could tell you're passionate about what you're doing. Uh, one of the examples they give in that book is Southwest Airlines. When Southwest Airlines was created, it was designed to help people have affordable flights. And because flights are obviously very expensive, but Southwest created this. And so what happened then were the bigger companies said, well, we want a bit of that action too. So they created, I think it was United and American, they created their own version of Southwest. And they had two different versions, but both those companies vanished. Because in the end, people were loyal to Southwest because what their goal was, was to help people out and make flying more affordable. So what it boils down to is what is, what is the reason you're doing what you're doing? And if it's pure, if it's because I love this, it'll show in what you're doing. So just think about that. Now, so to summarize everything, what is success? Uh, what it really boils down to. Uh, is it winning an Emmy Award? Like, yeah, for some, for sure. Is it, is it having a job that pays you enough to go on vacations and, and raise a family of five or six? Like, yeah, that could be it too. Or, or is it having a YouTube channel and, and, and having 300 followers, but the 300 best followers in the world, and they love your content and they constantly inspire you to do more? Um, that's something to think about because, you know, you can get in this industry and want to keep going higher, but then you can also just want to get in and be happy with what you do. And, and it's, there's nothing wrong with that. So uh, again, when it, when, it, when it boils down to it, positive state of mind, the most important thing. It's, it's crucial just in life in general, because being negative, nobody, nobody wants negative people around. It just drains you. And you, if you're in a position, I know for a fact, as somebody who is in a position of hiring, I do not want people who complain on the job. Um, it's okay to occasionally complain because, you know, things happen and, you know, you have to vent. But if you're the person who's complaining about every single thing, I will not hire you. And the same goes for a lot of other people. So just keep a positive state of mind. There's a lot of things you can do to do that. Um, again, self-help books can help that sort of thing. I, I didn't have uh, people telling me that sort of stuff. I had to go investigate it myself, but positive state of mind, big time. And again, useful skills, just keep learning. Don't stop. Gain skills, ask questions, learn things that make you just better in the workplace because it, it, will, it will get you those more opportunities, it'll get you paid better. And in the end, if that's what you're trying to do, then that's what you want to do. So, and the last thing, Hard work and sacrifice, I, I cannot stress it enough. Like working late hours. Last night I was up late prepping stuff because I wanted to be able to focus today. And sometimes you have to work till midnight and my girlfriend will say, are you gonna come to bed soon? I'm like, oh, I gotta keep working because I wanna do the best job I can. And sometimes that requires you working a little harder than most other people would. So 
definitely keep hard work and sacrifice in your heart. And those are the three things for sure I think would be crucial aspects to getting to the next level. Now, if any of you guys want to reach out to me after this, feel free to hit me up. Any of those social media platforms, if you have any questions after this that you didn't want to ask me, um, feel free. I will answer any questions you have. The only thing I, I could just say is I, I can't guarantee anybody work. I can't do any of that sort of stuff. I, I can look at pitches if you have a pitch and give you some, some tips, but I, I don't have uh, that sort of capability. So uh, with that said, thank you so much. Thank you, Jen, for letting me come and talk to you guys. And uh, if you have any questions now, Come on, please. Yeah. yeah. Come on, please. Thank you. Do we have a business card? Uh, yeah, I think so. Let's see. Would anyone like to ask some questions while we have our guest here? All right, coming right up for you, Amy. There you go. I think my last one. Okay, cool. So, Jason, have you please put your questions? Hi, Augie. Thank Hi. you so much for talking to us today. The one question I have for you is. Do people that are not like out of like in their early 20s, fresh out of college, are they facing a more difficult time getting a job? Like is, how much does ageism play in the hiring process of breaking into the industry? Because someone of 40, they might look and be like, oh, well, they're going to expect all this money. They might have kids. Yeah. And here's a 22 year old that I could pay, you know, minimum wage. So how do we overcome that hump and prove to people that we want to do the work um, aside from just the positive attitude and all of that that you were saying? Yeah, that's a gr very great question um, because I've had some uncles who try to get in the industry and I was like, yeah, it's going to be a little bit harder for you to get in the industry. It is hard, it's, it's for sure, because when it boils down to it, people will, coordinators, people who do hiring will think, well, can that person lift uh, a heavy piece of machinery, uh, or like a printer or something? And so, it is. It's, it's definitely tougher. But what it boils down to is it, you have to let them know that you're willing to go above and beyond. And, and that goes back to just conveying your goals. And, you know, if, if it boils down to telling people you, have, you want to work for free to do that, to impress upon them, to stand out, then that's what you have to do. Um, I, I have a friend who got into this business pretty late in his life. And we always, we were always like, is this guy like in a witness protection program? Because he was like an older dude. And we were like, why is he here? But everybody loves him. He works hard. He has a great attitude. And there, there's exceptions to the rule for sure. I'm not going to say that, that that ageism doesn't play a role. It does, for sure. I, I think about it with people. I'm like, can this person stay late? Can this person you know, lift a printer if they're older? That sort of thing. And, um, it's unfortunate, but it's just one of the things you have to think about. So to, to combat that, express your goals, express, express that you're willing to go above and beyond. If, and even if that means working for free, that's what you have to do. I work for, I, interning is working for free, more, you know, when it boils down to it. So as long as you're willing to make a little sacrifice, right, then you can break through those barriers. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, um, my question was about uh, mentoring. Mm -hmm. So that was actually a suggestion that someone made to me about getting a mentor. But yeah. The person actually did that and they charged for it. Mm. So I just wondered, like, what's your opinion about paying for a mentor or like going about getting one that you, I mean, it seems like it would be harder to get a free one. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, I mean, if you have to do it, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, sometimes, you have to do those sort of things. It's like, it's like taking a, a course, like for example, the, the Toastmasters thing, I have to pay for that, right? It's something, it's not a lot, but I still have to pay for it. But it gets me opportunities. It, it, it inspires me to do stuff like this. And so sometimes you, you have to be willing to understand that you know, not everything is gonna be for free. And you know, if, if you have to get a mentor that's gonna pay, that you have to pay for a coach, because um, that's a big thing now. It's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, you might want to shop around and just talk to other people and get something that is affordable for you if, if that's an issue. Um, but there, there's, there are people out there who are, are willing to, to help. If, if they see in you like a passion, then, you know, like I, I get on the phone. So this, this whole concept of me talking to students was inspired by me getting a bunch of calls from family and friends who were like, hey, can you talk to my uh, client's niece, or, or could you talk to my cousin? And I was, I would be like, yeah, I'll talk to you, you know, because for me, kind of like this, like I get to talk about myself, which is it's very fun now. But 
I know that within my journey there are lessons to be learned and so I love talking to people and telling them this sort of stuff because it, 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 it helps them and, and I like to, again like you asked me earlier like what kind of shows I like to work on, right? And so, yeah I like to work on amazing big shows that are, you know, the grandiose things, right? But I also like to know that I can help people and so you, there's people out there that are, are willing to help um, but you just have to kind of show that sort of positive energy and, and willingness to, and, and maybe it's like telling them, I'll be your assistant for two, three days or whatever it is that you could afford to do, um, because then that'll break you through that barrier of them charging you. So it, it's, it's one of those things where, don't, don't think of it too much as like, oh well, you know, I, I don't want to pay, it's not worth it. Because sometimes just like coming to this class, right, you have to invest in your future. and so. Sometimes it's worth it. Cool. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so when you started, you were talking about you know you didn't know what you wanted to do. You kind of fell upon this mm -hmm. late. I'm in the same boat right now. Yeah. I'm starting to fall in love with TV, but I'm taking cinema one and two, and I'm like, I'm, I'm having an issue where. I, I want to do TV, but I already started with cinema, and got it. I mean, it's yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. That's a great question, and so there's, there's. It's interesting. Like I'm actually in a place where I'm actually producing my own documentary right now, and that is not in the vein of what I've been doing the last twenty years, um, for the most part. But what happened was when I worked on that Beatles show my job on that show was to produce packages. And so what I did with those packages was I would go and interview, kind of like what you guys are doing in the class, I would go and interview, I first had to find some of the women who were in Ed Sullivan Theater for the Beatles. So that was producing part one, I had to find those people. And I found a couple of those people and then I had to go and interview them and then go into an edit room and work on it. And it wasn't what I had kind of trained to do. I'd been doing all this live stuff and so I kind of, went in there and it inspired me to start making my own film now which I'm working on. And so uh, yeah if you're if you're starting in one so you're you started you're in cinema right now that's what you are? Okay so but you think you want to go to TV. I mean here's the thing um, TV is again so big it's, it's there's it's not like and, and we are in a golden age of television where shows like Breaking Bad and those sort of shows are in Game of Thrones they are reaching a point of, of being at the level of the Oscars. It's just long form now, right? You know, so the movies are hour, two hours, three hours, depending on the director, but like these things, they're seasons and they're just long and deep. So you can get involved in, in TV still and it'd be cinema because the lines are blurred now. You know, uh, Free Solo, which won a documentary Oscar, uh, is the movie about uh, Alex Honnold who climbed El Capitan, right? They won the Oscar for Best Documentary, but then at the Emmys, they also cleaned up because it was a National Geographic uh, produced project, and so they won a bunch of Emmys too. So the lines have been blurred now, and they actually beat uh, us this year. We were nominated this year, and they beat us. Uh, but I, you know what? Like they were, they it was an amazing project, and so films like that, things like that, are kind of crossing the line. So I wouldn't worry too much. Um, about like being in one thing and not doing the other because there is a, there is a blur and there's there's a, uh, a convergence of the two medias now um, where where cinema is TV and, and that sort of thing so um, just kind of keep going at it and 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 if if you're if you really kind of hone in on like oh well, I want to do this then just start moving down towards that path but you can make drama single camera type things that go into TV as well. Now if you want to do live TV or like this and that sort of thing, that's a whole other thing, um, you, you, you kind of have to switch gears because there, it is hard to jump from one to the other. So keep that in mind. And if I can add on to that, this is actually the best place to figure out if you're more interested in the single camera style or multi-camera style. And it's not that you have to choose one or the other. So I think it's great that you're taking cinema one and two to learn the basic steps of how to make a short film and then you're taking the TV classes. So what I would recommend is that as you're learning both of these techniques, 
figure out which one sparks joy, if I can borrow a <laughs> phrase from Marie Kondo. And I mean that, like when you leave at night and it's 10 o'clock and you're leaving here with a smile on your face and you're like, yeah, that was great. And you're juiced. Yeah. What was it that got you juiced? Was it because you were helping the lighting team either on the three point lights in the studio or setting up C stands and making sure that you were crafting the light the way the DP wanted it to? Or were you in the control room and you got this high because you were sitting there pressing the buttons on the switcher as the director was calling the shots and you nailed it and didn't make a mistake? So that's what you should spend that time here doing is figuring out when you're gaining these skills, which ones you're really becoming passionate about and hone in your skills in that area. Because learning lighting and being multi-skilled in three-point lighting on a grid or single camera lighting, it's going to just make you that much more skilled. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and then, you know, going back towards what I was saying about side hustles is, say you want to do TV, but you still got love for cinema, make a movie. Yeah. You know, find some people, make a movie. Like what I'm doing in my documentary, nobody is paying me. I, I did a little bit of crowdfunding for that, but for the most part, everything's coming out of pocket. And like, for example, uh, yesterday, me and my editor met up at a, a, a shared co-worker facility, and we edited the whole day. And that was what I was doing on the side while I was doing some other work and you can do both you can do you could satisfy both of the passions you don't have to say well well I want to make a living in this and I want to make a living in this you can make a living in one and then you could do the other and then there is crossover because like for example creating packages for a live television show is something that happens and you might get hired on to work on a award show to create a uh, in memoriam package or a you know nominee package or whatever so the skills the skills do have a level of, of crossover but you know it, it's it's just one of those things where it, it it behooves you to stick with one to make a living you know cool yeah absolutely hi i'm julia may wong i appreciate you coming in to yeah. speak with us uh so i have two questions okay. One serious and one not so serious. <laughs> Good. What would you like first? Uh, I'll do what, serious one first. Okay, serious question. So, being that your background is award shows, mm -hmm. um, there was the there was the Oscars and the recent Emmys, where we had no hosts. Yes. Uh, how did that affect your job? Uh, do you f see that as a continuing trend? Um, and basically, what is your take on that? Yeah. Great, great question. Um, I actually really like it. Uh, I think everything is kind of in trends anyway, you know, like you can go through trends where you, you might, maybe next couple of years we don't have a host or whatever, but then there's trends where you miss somebody like Billy Crystal and that, that sort of, you know, being able to like, oh, something just happened, with us. somebody made a crazy award speech and then the host comes and says something funny, right? That's, that's part of that aspect. I don't like, I like, this last two years, I've liked the fact that there's been no hosts. It, it makes the show flow quicker. Uh, one of the things about having a host is that you, because you have a host, they feel they need, they have to create content sometimes, and you end up doing all these ridiculous skits and things that you don't really need to do, and they're not funny sometimes, right? So uh, it, it's got its time and place, and, and there are some hosts that are better than others. So uh, right now, it's cool. I dig it. I think it, I think it makes those shows flow quicker. Um, but at the same time, there's, 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 there's room for comedy. I think the best way to do it, if I, if I had my druthers and I was producing a show, you just need to make sure you're sprinkling some comedians in there, people who are funny and can give you that, that aspect of, that a Johnny Carson or a Billy Crystal bring. Um, just make sure you, make sure that when those comedians come in that the, the stuff is, is quality content. Now, silly, silly question. Okay, well, it's not silly, <laughs> but it, it, it's just not so serious. Okay. Okay, so this is in regard to your OCD yeah. episode where you cleaned out the company fridge. Yeah. Because um, I've done that. Yeah. Um, not a company fridge, but something similar. Mm -hmm. um, and I got reprimanded for it. Really? Because, because I had to deal with the uh, who moved my cheese ah, uh, got uh, it. thing. Yeah. So... Did it, did you encounter any of that? Yeah. Where it's like, where's my Coke? I well, worked it here five yeah. minutes ago. Yeah, I can understand that. I can understand that. I think um, that that is is a situation where, like, what I would do when I was doing that, I didn't necessarily clean out the fridge. What I did was just make sure everything was turned <laughs> properly and, and that sort of thing. And uh, it, it wasn't so much me totally cleaning out the fridge. That's something where you, you should wait for somebody to tell you, hey, clean out the fridge, you know. But... Um, if you just want to like tidy up, 
like that's that's kind of what what is is, is a better course because um, because yeah pulling out people's stuff people get a little uh, I mean the key though is to make sure you put your name on stuff if you're using a shared fridge so uh, but yeah like you, it's good to go above and beyond but um, in certain cases you know you don't you don't want to do things that um, that are going to and that's the thing too like when I did that when I when I did that paper uh, movement and all that sort of stuff I asked somebody first I was kind of like hey uh, I'm not doing anything right now. Can I organize paper? And then they were like, yeah, go ahead. You know, because back then we didn't have phones and we didn't have, like, you either had to bring a book to read or do something. So, like, I didn't have a book to read, so I went and just did stuff. And so sometimes just, like, ask your, your supervisor, like, hey, what can be done right now that isn't being done that I can be the one to do? Yeah, anything that you can do to make someone else's job easier or life easier. Yeah. And by the way, when my office assistant asked if they could help clean out my fridge, I was like, oh my <laughs> God, you're amazing, yes. <laughs> and then they restocked it, and now I'm forever grateful. Every time I open the fridge and there's a cold drink, I'm like, that person's amazing. Yeah. So it's, you know, knowing the situations and watch out for control freaks, I think is what you, you learned. Yeah, there, Commu Shana. communication is key there. It's all about just talking to your supervisor and just making sure it's all squared. Hi there, thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I have a question. Um, you mentioned goals quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I was curious as to what are your next, what's your next career goal or your ultimate Got it. goal? Okay, cool. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, my current, so it's all actually tied to this. So one of the things I decided was I wanted to create multiple sources of income. I didn't want to be, in the freelance world, one of the things you end up having to deal with is like, you're going to take jobs you don't want to take. Um, we were talking about that earlier. Like sometimes you do a job where you're like, oh, this sucks. This is not the job I want to do. But it's a good, it's a good paid, paying job, so you take it. Mm -hmm. But what I want to do is basically be in a situation where I don't have to take those jobs. So what I've decided to do, I've broken out, um, I put on paper, uh, going back to the Think and Grow Rich concept, is I put it on paper what I want to do. So I have my entertainment stuff is still there. I'm going to continue doing it, hopefully for the rest of my life, because I love it. I've gotten to go to places that I never thought I'd go. I got to shake hands with the president, and I've shook hands with Jeff Bezos, and just the mm -hmm. most important people in the world, and it's all because of television. So I don't ever that, want that to go, but I want to do other things. Public speaking is one of them. This was one of the things that I decided that if I get into this world, not only can I help people, but I can also make money because public speakers actually make a ton of money if they are doing the right sort of things. So um, education is probably the lower end of it, but if I wanted to go and veer off into real estate and talking about social media to real estate people, I can make five figures, six figures just for one appearance. So that's one of the goals. Um, but right now, part of that is this, and that's why I, I reached out to Jen because I want to go get in front of people, get, get some ad bats, if you will, in front of more people. Because I do the Toastmasters every two weeks, but I want to talk to more people and get the experience. And um, in this case, I get some free footage out of it too, so that's cool. Uh, so that's one goal. But then what I was mentioning earlier uh, in regards to new media, um, I want to have a Twitch channel. I want to stay at home for five hours and play video games. I, I've, it's funny, so I've worked on a bunch of uh, shows for E3, the video game convention. I produced a show this last year for YouTube. It was a 10-hour live stream. And it was all new video games coming out. And I grew up playing video games. We had Super Nintendo. We had all that stuff. And I love it. And um, I would, after each one of these shows, I would end up buying all these new games, and I, I, but I don't have the time to play them. So what I'm like, I'm like, well, what if I make time to play them and I turn that into a form of revenue, right? Because if you go on Twitch and you start your stream and you work on it for three years, five years, whatever it is, you can build that up so that you're making, even if it's only $200, you can make money from that. Same thing with YouTube. I want to start a YouTube channel about LA tourism. One of the things that I hate and I was actually on Hollywood Boulevard yesterday and I saw this. You have these dirty Spider-Man walking around the streets and they're like, here, take a picture with me. And then they try to charge you five bucks. And these poor tourists had no clue. But they're like, oh, Hollywood Boulevard, Walk of Fame, right? Yeah. But I want to create something that says, because Los Angeles is amazing for filming locations, right? If you are a big fan of Die Hard, you could go down to Century City and Nakatomi Plaza is right there and you could take a picture of it. If, you want, if you're a big fan of Nightmare on Elm Street, Go down the block and Nightmare on Elm Street house is there. If you're a big fan of the Black Dahlia murders, the house up there, the, up the road is there. There's so many cool different things in, in Los Angeles. 
and I want to create a YouTube show based on that. So I'm basically trying to create multiple streams of income utilizing new media, but also public speaking as well. You make <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I, have a, I have one tiny little question after that yeah. one. Where is the house from Nightmare on Elm Street? Oh, uh, it's in West Hollywood. I forget the exact street, but if you go on, there's there's lots of sites that. Uh, I, I guess I could find it. On yeah, there. like IMDb has it as well. Um, there's oh, there's I'll check that out. there's tons of stuff, and like uh, Rydell High from Greece is in Venice. Venice. Yeah, exactly. And actually, technically, it's in multiple places because uh, John Marshall High School, which is just around the corner here, was where they had the carnival aspect of it. But then. Uh, the, the front facade stuff, or the front stuff was shot in Venice, but then Greece too, which I'm a big fan of, too, yeah. is actually uh, shot in Will, um, uh, Whittier. Oh. A different, totally different school. So there's all this cool different stuff around that, that you can go check out, and, and that's what I want to do with that YouTube channel. Great, um, I also just have one more yeah. question. Um, you mentioned positive atti attitude quite yeah. a bit, and I was curious um, if, if you're spiritual or if what type of philosophies Got do you it. follow or whose? I know you did mention the Vincent Peale. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, wait, uh, did you mention Vincent Peale? I don't think. Come rich, grow rich, grow rich. Oh, think rich. and grow rich. Uh, Napoleon Hill. Napoleon oh, okay. Hill. Yes. Uh, yeah. Same kind of timeline. But yeah. Any no, one that you'd Yeah, you'd so sp spirituality. Uh, Deepak Chopra has a good book out. Called, it's like The Seven Signs of uh, Success or Spiritual Success, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a great book. Um, I don't have, I, I was, I was uh, born Catholic. And um, I'm a uh, lapsed Catholic, I believe is what it's called. I don't have a religious denomination. Uh, I just believe in positivity and, and like to me it's like instead of praying, I stay positive for people and I, I give them positivity. And it, to me it's equal to that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so I don't necessarily have uh, a, a uh, denomination that's you know, or philosophy, out there. Or philosophy. Yeah. philosophy of just Good positive aspects yeah, that's, manifesting. That's that's what it boils right. down to. It's it, it boils down to just staying positive and and in that that Deepak Chopra book is actually great because there's like aspects of it that I read that uh, like one of them is like you don't have to convince people um, your opinion is correct, right? Like I don't have to tell you that what I'm telling you up here is correct. You can take what I'm saying and determine it for what you want to. Um, and if you don't, I'm not going to force you. I'm like, no, this is the way to break into Hollywood, right? That's not the case. It's 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 basically like telling you, you know, you can have your opinion and they can have their opinion and it's all good as long as you're not intruding onto each other and that sort of forcing yourself onto mm -hmm. them, that sort of thing. So I don't have anything specifically, but I just try to just stay positive and just not be a mean person to other people. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks yeah, so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, my story is I started years ago studying photography mm -hmm. in um, black and white at uh, Santa Monica College. And then I went into acting. And um, I spent almost about 10 years uh, studying acting in different workshops. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm in AFTRA and SAG. And then I wound up uh, working in a theater where they have festivals come from all over the world. So I got to see how they you know, choose their films, what type of films, what countries they come from. and. Um, that was a real education I got for like five years at the American Cinematique. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the thing is though, um, I decided to come to the school because I had at the time no computer skills. And I s studied in another department um, for a long time till mm -hmm. I built those up. And then I said, well, you know, this is sometimes tedious. So I'm better at doing something creative, you know. Yeah. And I, went, I w came over here to uh, study anything I could get my hands on that was digital or uh, where I could communicate. And, but I'm having a little problem finding exactly where you know I fit in. Yeah. And, uh, and, and also at the same time, my age is, uh, I'm getting older too, so I'm, um, I've looked at like internships, but they seem to only want people that are like up to 28 years old yeah. or going full time in school. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you, I know you've kind of touched on doing stuff for free. Yeah. Um, what do you suggest you put in a resume, like a cover letter, when you're sending off, uh, you know, your something about yourself yeah. to other people? Okay. When you, you know, kind of, I've kind of been around this stuff. Yeah. Like, uh, I worked on the stage at Universal. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a stage manager for okay. Conan and the Barbarian. Oh, cool. I love that show. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the shows that inspired me to get into the industry. Oh. I loved it. So that was kind of a uh, springboard for me to think about, uh, you know, 
doing something behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. So how, how, how would I put all this into something to show people? Yeah, no, so that's, that's an interesting question. So, I mean, I guess it's, what it boils down to is like, what, what is your goal? What is your end goal that you're trying to reach? Mm. Like, what, do you have one at this point? Or are you just kind of like, I want to get in and try um, to figure it out? I like events. Okay. I like putting together events. Yeah. Um, I like music. Okay. Um, producing something like a music show. Or, okay. Or, uh, you know, doing some graphics or something on, on the computer. Got it. Okay. Well, graphics actually is a great place to be in, in regards to your question about like ageism and stuff. Like, um, because that, that's the place where they're not going to sweat you for, for your age and sort of thing. So if you can, if you can get good at graphics and you're able to create graphics and that sort of thing, then that's your, that's be, that's your resume. You, because what happens is you send in your reel and you show them your graphics. In the end, it's going to be a matter of if they're good or not. And you know, you might wow. create a bunch of graphics and you think they're good, but then you send them to somebody and they're like, eh. And that could just be a taste thing too. Like, you know, we, we, I've worked with different graphics people and some of their stuff's great. Some of them's like, eh. But everybody's got different tastes. Okay. But if you want to do graphics, that's, that's a great place. Um, actually, look up, there's a place called CGLA. And okay. they do, they, they have classes for, that teach you how to do what's uh, they're called the expression machine. That's kind of the deco and. Oh, right. That's what you, okay, so oh. they, they have courses there. So if you, if you finish the courses here and you want to learn more, they, they have a more expanded uh, curriculum there. And, and it's, all, it's also kind of a pipeline because the guy who owns that company does like a lot of the big shows. So when he gets calls and he can't take them and he knows you're good at something, he'll be inclined to, you know, forward you down that route. But, okay. that, but that's actually a great place to go down if you're worried about um, ageism being an issue with, with what you want right, to do. Right, because I'm sure it might come up down the road, you know. Like. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and with stage managing, stage managing is a great thing too because if you have that experience where you've done that sort of stuff already, yeah. that, now the, the tough part about stage managing is because all the big shows are union. So you have to get right. into the guild. I was in the union okay. at one time. Okay, yeah. So so getting in the union is one of the toughest things uh, once you've broken in because you have to really have multiple people vouching for you as in like writing letters to the mm. DGA. You also have to prepare like a booklet of like three years worth of experience on shows. Wow. So <laughs> so that, that route, if you want to go union uh, stage managing, is a little tough. But... There's, there's things like Universal. A friend of mine works at Universal and does the Waterworld stunt show. Right. But she also stage manages on other shows as well uh -huh. um, that are Guild. And then she also does production management. So there's, there's places where you can do that sort of stuff. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And to follow up, Joan, Augie asked you a very direct question. He said, what's your goal? And you said, I like this, I like this, I like <laughs> this. Those aren't goals, so I'm going to give you some homework. <laughs> Your homework is to fill out this sentence. I want to accomplish blank by the time I'm blank. That's a goal. Okay. So this goes back to what we talked about earlier is using the time here to figure out, oh, I like this, I like this, I'm good at this, this makes me really excited. Ruminate on that for a little bit and figure out what your actual goal is so that when you leave here a semester from now or a year from now or in eight weeks, you know what your next steps are going to be to help you reach that goal. That's great. That's what I want to know. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. You're the only one who can answer that. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, my question. No, for example, I have screenplay for season, um, for show. And what do you think for your opinion, uh, which um, TV be more interesting for new scenes? Where I can bring... Uh, my screenplay and uh, like, okay, I want to be director for the show. Mm. And uh, it's um, mm, kind like adventure. Okay. So you want to, just so I'm clear, um, you, you have a screenplay that you've written yes. and you want to sell it or you want to bring yes, it somewhere? Yes, and, and, and I want to be part of this Got show. it, okay. I mean, what I would say to you is this is a situation where you have to kind of create the opportunity for yourself because it'll be hard. It'll be hard for you to write a script and sell it and find an agent who's going to sell it to uh, Warner Brothers or one of the big companies. So this is where you should find people, whether it's people in this class, whether it's people who you may know already that, that want to do a film and create maybe a proof of concept sort of thing. So you don't have to do the whole film, but maybe you do one scene 
or you do a couple scenes, you shoot it, and then you put it together, and then now you have something. Um, then what you could do is you can try to crowdfund. Crowdfunding right now, are you familiar with like Kickstarter, oh, yes. Indiegogo? I did. Yeah. I did. Okay. So what I would suggest is create a proof of concept or, or some sort of way to show people that you have an idea that you want to get funded and then put it out there and, and try to get, get it funded. And in the end, it's, it, what it boils down to, that that, that whole space, um, and even back, going back to social media space, is if your content is good, it will, it will get to the next level. If it's not, you might have to do some like, um, be self-aware and understand maybe this isn't as good, maybe, you know, maybe I think it's really good, but it's not. So you have to basically put something together, and that, this is what I would do if I were you, basically. I would go and do a little proof of concept, shoot a couple scenes, make a trailer, and put it on YouTube. Or, or not YouTube, but uh, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, that sort of thing. So it's, 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 you have to find somebody who could edit if you don't know how to edit. You have to find people who are gonna shoot it with you, that sort of thing. It's, it's tricky, it's, it's, it's not easy, but production is not easy. Like that's, that's one thing you have to understand. So if you can go down the route, if you have a great script, it's amazing, you then need to know somebody. If you wanna sell it to a Warner Brothers or Universal, you have to have an agent basically who's gonna get it in front of somebody. So you have to know somebody who will, who will put that in action for you. Otherwise, you have to go and create the opportunity for yourself. Does that make sense? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. More questions? Any more questions? Well, um, I could sit down and ask you <laughs> questions all day, but we've had him here on the spa for a good hour or more. Augie, I can't thank you enough for offering yeah. to come down and speak with everyone today. Absolutely. He's going to be hanging out for a little bit, so if you have some questions or want to jot down his social media, feel free. Um, TV67, we're not done for the day. We just have a little bit of wrap-up. So we'll call a 15-minute break. Um, come back in at quarter till, and we'll go over our last few assignments to make sure everyone's clear on what we're working on. Thank you all for coming today. We really appreciate thank your you. time. Thank you, Augie, for being thank here. Thank you so much. Hey, cool. Oh, don't turn off completely. Just oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I realize once we turn